What's up JHM congregations? My name is Tammy and I'm so excited to be here today to share with you guys about our week two of a new series that we started off last week called Boot Camp. Boot Camp, where we are learning about spiritual disciplines, habits that will help us grow our relationship with Jesus. Well, a question that I wanna start off our time together today is this, is too much of a good thing bad for you? Well, I want you guys to quickly think that if you could think of some things that would make it on this list, what would you say? Well, today I brought a few things that maybe you've thought about before, maybe not, but let's, let's check this out. Here's our first one. Is too much sleeping bad for you? The amount of times that I have asked junior hires, what do you like to do on your free time? They say, sleeping. And I get it because I love sleeping too. I can't live without it, you can't live without it. But funny enough, there is a danger to oversleeping. When we sleep too much, we can actually be left feeling more tired than we were before. Well, how about this next one, eating. Who here doesn't love food? I love food. And as you can see, this is Lady in the Tramp with a big pot of spaghetti in front of them. Spaghetti is actually one of my favorite things to eat. I have one last one, uh, which is this one. Hand washing, washing your hands. Uh, studies show that too much washing of your hands can create some damage to your skin and give germs a place to grow and thrive on it. Ew, disgusting, right? Now, I do need to make something very clear right now. Junior high boys out there, please do not go home saying, hey, mom, dad, Tammy gave me permission to not wash my hands anymore. Guys, I need to make something clear. Please still wash your hands, especially before you eat. But it's just to show that too much sometimes of a good thing can be bad for you. Well, the point that I want to make today is this. Is there some really essential things in our life that we need to grow and to thrive? Like these are things that we need to live and to live well. These are good things. But sometimes too much of good things can be bad for us. There is one thing that God talks about that we can never get enough of. And that thing is called prayer. Uh, actually, in 1 Thessalonians, it talks about this. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, a simple verse, two words, pray constantly. In other versions, it actually says to pray without ceasing, to pray essentially without stopping. And my question today is, is what does that look like? What does that look like to never stop praying? That sounds like a really big task, a good thing, but it sounds like something that I could probably get too much of. Well, today we're gonna to talk about a little bit of what God meant when he asked us, invites us into praying. So here's your first fill in of today, that prayer is a discipline. Prayer is a discipline. It's a habit that will grow our relationship with Jesus. I don't know about you, but when I think of prayer, I think about prayers that I say before I eat my breakfast, Jesus, Thank you for this Captain Crunch cereal. Or prayers that I say before I go to bed, God, thank you so much that this day was awesome. But have you ever been asked to pray before and you didn't know what to say or you felt like you didn't have enough words to talk about? Well, anytime I know that when someone says this question, does anybody out there want to pray or would be willing to pray, what does everybody do? This, this quickly looks at their friend, everything to not make eye contact with the person who just asked that question. Now, sometimes we have some brave souls, but I get it that sometimes I do that too. Because of the pressure that we feel to have to have the perfect words to say or to have a ton to talk about. But what if this is not entirely what Paul meant when he said, we need to pray without stopping. I think Paul, who's the writer of this verse, is saying that prayer is about our communication with God. It's our awareness of God in our life always. So that whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you say, invite God to be a part of it. 
know that God is with you and hears all your wants, needs, conversations, desires. He is there with you through every moment of life. And so today we're gonna talk a little bit more about what prayer is and what prayer isn't. I love the story of Daniel. And some of you guys might be familiar of him as the guy in the Bible who got thrown into the lion's den. Little background about Daniel is that Daniel was a young man when he was taken into captivity in the land called Babylon. Now under his time, there was many people who were against Daniel because he chose to follow after God. In Daniel chapter six, it says this, these people who were out to get Daniel go up to the king and say, anyone who petitions any God or man except you, the king, will be thrown into the lion's den. So basically these people come up to the king and they're like, hey king, uh, let's just make this rule out there that if anybody chooses to worship anybody besides you, uh, let's throw them into a lion's den. Funny idea, right? And this king who is a little full of himself is like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do it, signs this paper. When Daniel learned that the document had been signed, he went to his house, the windows in its upstairs room opened towards Jerusalem, and three times a day, he gets down on his knees, he prays, and he gives thanks to God, just as he had done before. So our next point is this, is that prayer isn't about you first, it's about God first. Prayer is about you, but it's not about you first, it's about God first. Daniel's life was in danger, and in this moment, he had two choices. The first choice was stay safe, not get eaten by lions, but potentially that would mean he'd have to turn his back from God. The second decision was this, is possibly get eaten, but choose to put his full faith and trust in God. And what does Daniel do? Daniel goes straight home, he prays, and what he says is, Thank you, God. He gives thanks to God as the very first thing that he does. Now for me, I know that if I was in his situation, I would be freaking out. And maybe you would too. I would be thinking, worst case scenario, I'm gonna die. Maybe I'm already dead. My life is doomed, it's over. What I want you guys to see is that it's normal to think about yourself first sometimes, right? As those fears and those worries creep in, you are just so overwhelmed by those thoughts and those feelings. And I, I want you to know that that's valid. It's valid to feel all those emotions, but it's actually kind of challenging to do what Daniel did, to know that he could run straight to God instead and to say, God, I'm gonna put those worries before you. God, I'm gonna put my eyes on you and I'm gonna trust you. And so that's the impor importance of this next point is this, is that prayer is about our faith and our trust in God, no matter the circumstances. It's about faith and trust. And what Daniel did is he immediately put his focus on God instead of focusing on what could happen. It's a hard thing to do, but I think it did a lot of good for Daniel in his life. In Proverbs 3, an encouragement to us is this. It says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't rely on your own understanding, what you see in your circumstances and the things that, that are going on around you, but in all your ways, know him, know God, that he will make your path straight. See, I'm sure there was fear in Daniel, but he understood that prayer was going to be about his faith and his trust and not always in his circumstances. He knew that he could trust God. Now, as you guys know, if you've heard anything about God, we believe that God is big and powerful. He created the heavens, the earth. He created you and me. He is capable of doing wonderful and amazing things. I think sometimes when we know of God in this way, it can be tempting to think of God kind of like a genie where we give him a wish list of all the things that we need him to do. God, can you do this for me? God, can you give me this? God, can you fix that person? Prayer isn't making God our genie to grant our wishes. That's your next villain, is that prayer isn't making God our genie to grant our wishes. See, because if God were our genie, then somehow we've believed that we're the ones in control. And actually, God is. And so you might be thinking, well then Tammy, why pray at all about our needs? I want you guys to know this. If, if you don't know this, God loves you. 
He cares about our needs, our struggles, our desires. And it's important to know that God actually does want to meet those needs. God is capable of answering our prayers. He does work in miracles and he has plans that are so much bigger than we can dream up or imagine. We have a good God who loves us, who loves you so much. But on the other side of this, there might be a question in your head um, that's a challenging one. It's a little difficult, honestly, for me to even answer, but it's a question that I've thought of before, and maybe you're thinking it right now, and it's this. What do we do about the times then that we pray and God doesn't answer our prayers? Again, like I said, this is a hard question to answer when circumstances are challenging and just so overwhelming. And you're thinking, is there a light at the end of this tunnel? I know that when I look to God's word, this is what I see, is that prayer is much bigger than you expect. That's our last point is this, is that prayer is much bigger than you expect. In Daniel 6, this is how the story of the lion's den closes out. In verse 20, it says that when the king, when he reached the den, he cries out in anguish to Daniel and he says, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you continually serve been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel says, my God sent his angel, shut the lion's mouth and they haven't harmed me. Guys, Daniel was saved from the lion's den. What God did in this moment was a miracle. He did the impossible. God showed up in a way beyond something that we can imagine. But why did Daniel have to go through this? The trial, the fear, the worry. Remember, Daniel is actually still in captivity in this moment where he was taken away from his city, his home, his friendships, his family. But what we learn through the story of Daniel is that God had great plans for him. God used Daniel that through his faith and his trust that he put in God, that God utilized him in amazing ways. And because of that, he did things beyond his understanding. In that moment, sometimes we have one view of what's going on and what's happening. But God wanted to use Daniel in bigger ways than he could ever imagine. Stuff like showing the king that God is true and real and God is out there and he does exist and he is capable and he's wonderful. That God is worth worshiping. Guys, as we come to a close, I want you to know, I get it. Life is complicated. And I, I can't promise to you that life will ever be perfect because God doesn't promise that. We will go through trials and hard stuff like this, but I can promise you that when we choose to say yes to inviting Jesus into our life, that he does promise this, that he will never leave our side, that he will be there to give us guidance, that he has plans that are bigger than you can expect, like the hope that he sets for a future of heaven and an eternity with him. God wants to spend an eternity with you where the sins and the pains of this world will no longer exist. God loves you. And so what we do is look at prayer as if God is like our best friend where we invite God into being a part of all aspects of our life, where we talk to him about the good things, the bad things, the big things, the small things. God wants to be a part of all of it. The last thought I wanna leave you guys with is this, is that anyone can pray. Anyone, even you, can pray. And God is always ready to listen to you. Some of you might be afraid to pray because it's something that you've never done before or it sounds really complicated. But my encouragement to you is this, is that you're not gonna learn what it means to pray unless you just start praying. One thing that I wanna do as we come to a close of our time, and this is something I'm gonna invite your leaders to do with you guys separately at your congregations, is to pray, is to pray. Um, I talked a lot about how God cares about our needs, um, but God cares about everyone's needs. And when it comes to prayer, we don't get to just lift up the needs of our own, um, but in prayer, we can also lift up the needs of others. Now, something in our world that I'm sure you guys have been seeing come up in the news in conversations with your family or friends is the war that's going on in Ukraine and Russia. And so I wanna take the time to just quickly go over 
five prayer points um, for you guys that as we close out in our time together today, that you will go and as, um, as a congregation, you guys will take just a couple of minutes to say your prayers um, for this specific need that we see going on in our world today. Here's some prayers we can have for Ukraine. First one is this. Let's pray for people to be filled with peace, strength, and faith in Jesus. Two, let's pray for God to provide for the basic needs of these people, food, water, shelter, safety. These are all things that are a struggle to come by right now um, in Ukraine. Three, let's pray for God to give the decision makers, our presidents, leaders, authorities, wisdom and courage to make the right decisions. And four, let's pray for God to give strength and resources to volunteers who are providing humanitarian aid. God, we just come before you today and Lord, um, I thank you that um, we know that when two or more are gathered, that God, you are in our midst. You are already in our midst. You are with us. You are with each and every student across these different congregations. And Lord, right now, we just take a moment to lift up the needs, to lift up the needs of the people in this world where there is, um, gosh, there's just so much pain going on right now in both Ukraine and Russia. And Lord, so we take the time to just lift up these specific things that for the people out there, that God, you fulfill them with an overwhelming sense of just peace and strength and knowing that God, you are with them, that God, you are by their side and that they are not alone. Um, and God, so we just lay this all into your hands, Lord. I thank you for our time together today. In your name we pray, amen. All right, guys, well, I will see you next time and uh, go and spend these next couple of minutes in prayer.